let's talk about formal charges and how are they are important in mainly skeletal line structures and you remember that the formal charge is the the charge that's on an element if it has a improper number of uh, electrons so if we look at this nitrogen for instance just to practice figuring out formal charge remember that we calculate formal charge by observing the electron count half of each bond gets counted so that gives us two electrons one from each bond plus all of the lone pairs equals six and if we subtract the normal electron count or the valence count of nitrogen we come up with one and this is a, a negative one so maybe we want to do five minus six uh, anyhow this is a negatively charged nitrogen and you'll notice certain patterns uh, for instance table 2.3 shows you all the patterns that we might see with nitrogen in terms of its formal charge and they range from a nitrogen that's uh, plus plus one to zero to minus one so in this case we see a minus one nitrogen uh, and so the formal charge gives us some indication of, of what's going on I could also draw this structure like this uh, I'm gonna leave out the CH threes and just have the end of lines you remember that the end of a line is always a CH three these are the same structure so I, you see I've taken off the CH three and I've left off the lone pair remember that I said that lone pairs in skeletal line structures are optional the formal charge though is not optional we have to add that because this is not the same as I'm having trouble drawing this morning this is not the same as that that one is telling me I have no uh, formal charge uh, and that would be a very unusual state because this would involve a radical this is the uh, electron count and the, the lone pairs or electrons uh, that I would have around here and so again these are not equal this should be a not equal sign we don't often see this so let's ignore that because we're not going to see a, a lot of nitrogens with a single electron but my point here is that it's important to include the formal charges and we looked at ethanol and we said we have to always draw the H because if we draw this uh, we're wondering is there an H there uh, if there's not an H do we have a charged oxygen or not and indeed a charged oxygen is pretty likely in this case and it would be a negative one charge if we do our electron count half of each bond is one and then you see that we have six electrons in lone pairs so that is seven so the six electron valence count minus the seven electrons we just counted gives us a negative one charge and that's what I have right here uh, and so this drawing is also the same as this drawing even though there's no lone pairs the negative tells you hey there are three lone pairs here and if you're faced with this drawing at some point in your organic class um, it might be good for you to mentally or even with a pencil fill in the lone pairs because sometimes we take a lone pair and we draw arrows from it and have it do certain things that should be the head of an arrow let's make that a better drawing um, we have sometimes an arrow starts from a lone pair and so you can do that um, more easily I think when we're a beginning student if we actually draw in a lone pair uh, and so table 2.2 gives us all the patterns for oxygen and its electron count and how that translates into formal charge and you'll see again now you'll see again that certain patterns lead to a plus oxygen a neutral oxygen or in this case a negative oxygen so I'll encourage you to look at both of these tables I don't need to re regurgitate them here you can read them in the textbook just uh, fine but it's important that you know these and can recognize them quickly uh, because in the future it's going to be important to be able to draw these types of ions really quickly and understand that there's a negative um, formal charge on this O and also what that means because then we can automatically add in these lone pairs mentally we don't have to waste time drawing them out so skill builder 2.5 asks us to identify lone pairs on certain nitrogens so let's look at a couple of different nitrogen examples that have different electron counts around the N so here we're giving you the formal charge and then we're asking you fill in lone pairs 
So here we have a formal charge of zero. We don't often write it like that, but I'll just leave it there for now. And so we know that our nitrogen electron count needs to match the valence account of a, a valence count of a normal nitrogen, which is five. And I have one from each of these three bonds, so I need two more. So a nitrogen with three bonds and a lone pair is zero. Do I need to add any lone pairs to this nitrogen that has a plus charge? Well, that's telling us it has one fewer electrons than usual. Uh, and it, what we're showing is one from each of these bonds, right? There's an electron. If we count, half of each bond is four. That's one fewer than usual. So there are no lone pairs to add for this second um, example. So in this case, four bonds, zero lone pairs, is a plus charge on the nitrogen. And you'll find that again in table 2.3. Lastly, we have a negative charge, and we have two bonds. So a negative nitrogen means we have one additional electron than usual. That's six. I already have one from each of these bonds, so I should add four more in the form of two lone pairs. So this pattern is two bonds and two lone pairs. It gives us always a negative nitrogen, and you'll see that again in Table 2.3. The last thing I want to talk about here are 3D line structures. And sometimes we'll be drawing and we'll have an oxygen here, but we'll want to show the reader that um, it's actually projecting towards us. So we might draw this instead. We call that a wedge. And that means that the OH is projecting out of the plane. Now the plane will always be understood to be the plane of the paper or the plane of the screen, whatever um, we're looking at. So this OH is projecting towards us. And maybe we have another functional group here that's on a what we call a dash. And that's projecting away from us. or we'll say uh, projecting out back from the plane, away from the viewer. I'll just keep that. So the dash means it's going back into the plane of the paper or into the plane of the screen. So it's a projecting away from us, whereas the wedge here is projecting towards us. And so that can help us sort of decide, if we look at this ring, where there are six carbons in the ring, here's a methyl that's projecting towards us above the ring, if you think about the ring being in a plane, and here is a methyl group that's projecting back, away from us, into the ring, or a CH3 group, I should say. So uh, we're going to use these wedges and dashes to indicate three-dimensional nature of these organic molecules. There are very few organic molecules that are completely flat. Uh, so in chapter 4, we're going to delve more, deeper more into uh, the three-dimensional nature of that, and we'll bring some models to class, and we'll get a chance to, to discuss this in, in more depth. And if you check out the medically speaking box, um, I think in our text it's right before section 2.7, uh, you can learn about how the 3D shape affects biological activity.